You can hear God's voice and prophesy. Every person with the Spirit of God living in them can be used by God for entry-level prophecy. Entry-level prophecy is the starting point of an incredible adventure in hearing God's voice and prophesying. Prophecy encourages, comforts, and edifies people. And our heart is to equip and educate you to hear God and prophesy, walking it out as a lifestyle. And that's why we created Entry-Level Prophecy eCourse on CharismaCourses.com. Through this powerful eCourse, you will be equipped to hear God and to prophesy. You will gain the necessary biblical understanding needed to take a step of faith and speak what you hear God saying to see people encouraged, comforted, and edified. In this course, you'll learn about the fruit of the Spirit, the character traits of God, how to receive and deliver a prophecy, how to judge a prophecy, and what foundation you need to prophesy, and what heart motivations are necessary to prophesy. When you enroll in this e-course, you'll also have access to bonus materials and our live coaching sessions. Go to charismacourses.com to purchase entry-level prophecy and learn how to hear God's voice and prophesy. Global Prophetic News, this is John Natale. Jared Lasky is not with us tonight. There is a possibility that we will be doing another Global Prophetic News tomorrow. It's been an honor to work with him as we give a, an insight on national, national issues with a, with a prophetic perspective. So it's been a real blessing, and we're so thankful. Thankful for your support, the opportunity of, of bringing this information prophetically on social media through Facebook and YouTube. So I hope it's a blessing to you. How you can show your support, go to our website, johnnatalli.wordpress.com or connect with Jared Lasky on Adventures in the Spirit or Fireborn Ministries. So thank you again for your support. Tonight I want to talk to you about we released a dream that we had the other day regarding Donald Trump and what that means. What does it mean going ahead? What does it mean in the future? What does it mean for the now? I do want to just share with you, in 2015, I had a significant dream about him in December, which you actually find on our website, johnnatalley.wordpress.com. The dream was actually released in February and on all the different platforms. It was actually, um, we couldn't find it anymore on certain platforms, but you can find it on our platform. It was removed um, specifically regarding um, that prophetic word or that prophetic dream of what was come regarding Donald Trump. But that dream in 2015 had to do with what was coming in the future and significantly asking him questions about presidency and was he prepared to be president of the United States. And um, that dream did come to pass, obviously, in 2016. But now here we are in 2023. We've been being used prophetically in government for the last eight years now to be almost a little bit more than eight years, actually, regarding presidents, ministers, nations, whatever God chooses to use us with. And I just wanted to make sure I, I just make it really clear. Our ministry, my office, the mandate God has given me, I don't endorse individuals. I endorse God. I just speak whatever God tells me to speak. I release whatever he tells me to release. doesn't matter who it is. We've been speaking and releasing prophetic words um, regarding many individuals, especially in government for, for the many years that have passed and the many years to come. And I hope it's a source of encouragement and inspiration. That's what it's all about. And helping people understand, giving them a bit of a picture. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, call unto me and I'll show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. So sometimes the mysteries of heaven, when they're released, God uses specific people. Doesn't matter who it is, whether it's me or somebody else, to give insight and understanding and revelation to what it's all about. So we have this dream that just came about just a few days ago. And the significant thing about this dream was I was in the future. And you can read this dream uh, on our website, johnnatalley.wordpress.com. You can actually listen to it on Facebook as well regarding the dream. I released it a few days ago. I did, I did a video on it, a live regarding the dream and what I saw and what I experienced. But I can tell you one thing that's so important to me right now is that in the 2015 dream, it was what was coming. And I was allowing to see in the future, but what was coming. This dream was also about the future, but it was also what had already taken place. So what I already saw a final scenario, I've already saw an outcome, and that was very significant. So if you 
did read the dream or happened to watch the video regarding the dream, it's very significant regarding what took place. And there's a lot of key things that take place in the dream, uh, just the posture, you know, um, seeing Donald Trump sitting in the back row during, uh, you know, it almost looked like a rally, but there was nobody at the rally. There was steel folding chairs throughout this farming area. It looked like almost like a farm festival. If you ever go to, you know, during the during the fall months, you know, whether or not you're picking apples or, you know, they, they have an event or whatever out in the fields. There's there was nobody. There was no industry. There was no homes. It was just these steel folding chairs and a platform in which I wasn't sure in the dream whether or not he was speaking. Already speaking, rather, or he was getting ready to speak. I wasn't given that information, but I do know that he was the speaker. But I also do know that he was sitting in the back row and he wasn't sitting towards the end of a row towards the aisle. He was sitting like towards in the middle. And he had his team with him. He had protection services around him. And I was sitting directly in front of him in the chair ahead of him. But the one thing I also recognized in the dream was that there was a great humility that he carried. He wasn't concerned about being in the front row. I've been a speaker for over 20 years, whether it's in a public setting or it's in a church setting. And 100% of the time, you're sitting in the front row. And there are times where there have been times when I've sat in the second row or third row or, or my wife and I have chosen to sit in the very back row. And that to me is a posture of I don't need to be in the front. I need I'm, I'm you know, we're there to whenever I've been in a church setting to, to worship with the people um, before I speak. Um, I don't need to be in the front. I don't need to show people that I'm, you know, I'm the guest speaker because it's not about me. It's about Jesus. So that was significant in the dream that he was in the back row and he wasn't interested. It wasn't a concern of his, but I did notice. I saw the suit he was wearing. It was the blue suit that he always wears. He had a very um, stern, but uh, a diligent, but humble face. You can see that he was very determined. I wrote about it the other day. And the significant thing also that I noticed was that he carried a posture of, of he was relying on the voice of God. And that was the symbol. That was symbolic regarding myself sitting in the front row towards him, rather, the row that was directly in front of him. That's a prophetic posture. It's a prophetic, symbolic manifestation of an individual that carries an office of a prophet or a prophetic voice directly in front of him. And it also confirms the word of God where it talks about the Lord goes ahead of us. He goes before us, not behind us. And so... It was it was important to me, and it was also I believe it was important that Holy Spirit was showing me this in the in the dream that he was putting his trust in God, he was putting his trust in the Lord, he was being sensitive to the voice of God. But the prophetic posture was a representation of of uh, not just strength, but of of favor, of protection and guidance, and that is very very key. But I do know that there was a tremendous peace that was in the land. Tremendous peace that was carrying around in that atmosphere that was just brooding over, over the field. And that to me was super important. But I do remember, as I said before, how I was taken into the future. It wasn't 2023 and it didn't even seem like 2024. It seemed as if we were deep like into 2025 because during the election times of 2024, you're at towards the end of the year. So there's definitely something going on spiritually. There's definitely something going on physically that's manifesting and how we're, you know, getting all this information of the Lord giving us information, you know, and, and maybe some prophetic insight, which I believe he showed me regarding the future and what's taking place. So there's a lot of things going on on a national level right now, especially right now during the year of the open door on the Jewish calendar. We just um, finished Rosh Hashanah. We're getting ready to enter into Yom Kippur. We're in the 10 days of awe, um, which is the year 5784, which is the year of the open door, which is so significant. I've always experienced tremendous amount of warfare in the September month in ministry for the, for the past 20 years. And I'm sure you've experienced some crazy stuff too. 
But this is very significant right now, the, the, the year of the open door. And even the 10 days of all that represent, you know, um, repentance, forgiveness of people that have done you wrong, and just causing your heart to, to be broken by God and, and being open before God and being transparent and just letting everything that you've been holding on to, or maybe the things that um, have been disruptive and things that have been challenging you. And maybe people have challenged you and people have been creating a, quite a bit of stress or just some crazy stuff that you're going through. We've got to release that. We've got to let it go. So when the Lord speaks about the open door, the first thing that comes to my mind is when Nebuchadnezzar was looking at Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego in the fire. And when they were put in that fire, and all of a sudden, Nebuchadnezzar says, it seems like I see a door, and I see a fourth man standing in there as the Son of God. And the Lord, oh, come on, God, the Lord gives him that opportunity. It wasn't just about these three men showing and, and, and being, you know, revealing that nothing can touch me in the natural. Obviously, there, there had to be tr tremendous crazy faith in order to get to walk into that fire where there was individuals that lost their lives because they increased the intensity of the fire. But these guys walked in and there had to be a, a realm of just supernatural faith where they're not operating in the natural realm anymore. They're literally tapping into a crazy spiritual realm where they're totally disengaged with the natural realm. But not just the fact that, you know, they weren't touched, they weren't burned. It was the fact that God's heart and God's love for all mankind, and he wants everyone to see the glory. Come on, God, that Nebuchadnezzar sees the open door. He sees the door. He sees the doorway. And that basically is it's, it's, a, it's a portal where his spiritual eyes now are being opened. Because, oh, come on. Because right now, if, if Nebuchadnezzar, if Nebuchadnezzar, his spiritual eyes are not open, he's not seeing the fourth man in the fire. But he does see the fourth man in the fire. So it's important for Holy Ghost to show Nebuchadnezzar as well, for all to see the glory of God that's manifesting. And that's what I also believe right now that's taking place in the nation, around the world, that's so important in the bride, in the church, in America, and even what's going on on a national level, what we see right now in our own government, is that when when we're, we're tapping into something, if the year of the open door, like I said, with Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, the 10 days of awe, this is all significant. And this dream that's brought to my attention regarding the future, that, oh, come on, there it is. There's your portal. Just like Nebuchadnezzar had there, the portal of, of seeing something, see, seeing something supernatural. Where the word of God says, Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I'll show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know, which were, you're tapping into something that you don't have the physical ability to tap into. We've talked about Elijah. We've talked about Mount Carmel. We've talked about, you know, in, 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 in Kings, where Ahab is asking all of Israel, he gathers all of Israel. He says he gathers all the people of Israel that meet at Mount Carmel, all 450 prophets and Elijah. And then there's this crazy showdown. All right. But at the end of the day, a showdown really is basically about, you know, two sides, two individuals, whether even a gauntlet, you know, there's a showdown. Let's see who can draw quicker. But, you know, it's not about, you know, what the 450 prophets are doing. It's not even about what Elijah is doing because at the end of the day, it's not Elijah, it's God. It's Jesus that's doing all the work. But everyone's gathered. It's not about just putting Elijah on display or the 450 prophets on display. It's about all of Israel. It's about people. It's about everyone seeing the glory of God. And I've said this before. I'm going to say it again regarding what's taking place in our nation on a governmental level, we're all allowed to see specific things that take place. And we're all in a position to make choices of whether or not we're going to keep contending on the promises of God, keep believing on the past prophetic words. There's so many of them about what's going on right now. God's using people even in the now to release prophetically what's taking place, giving us nuggets, giving us puzzle pieces, what's taking place and in the now and in the future, and even in this dream of God showing me what's ahead. It could have been 2025. Maybe it was the end of 2024. Maybe it was December. Who knows? But all, all I do know is the Lord had taken me way deep into the future, and I saw his posture, and I knew that he was carrying a significant authority in the land, and that because that his he had a team with him, and then at that moment when 
when the, when that presence was really strong in the dream and I was seeing the attributes and the characteristics of Donald Trump, all of a sudden it was time for us to leave. Nobody said anything. There wasn't anyone that gave a command that said we need to leave. All of a sudden people stood up and they needed to go to their vehicles and they needed to go back to business as usual and keep something running or keep something going. But I do know we were in that field for a reason. Oh, come on, God. We know that Jesus did many things out in the field, many things out in the valley, many things out, you know, you know, on the by the seashore or on the water where things were taking place and people were were listening to what he was saying because something dramatic or something significant was about to take place. Even the woman at the well, where that well was, just off the grid, you know, in you know, in a, it wasn't in the middle of the city, it was it was outside the city you know, in, in a far distance away where people had to walk to and get to. And that's what had to, what I did in this dream. I had to get to a place. I had to walk to the, to the field and walk into this open land and get to these steel chairs and find myself positioned in a posture of, you know, in front of him. I don't know the full manifestation and the full reason of why I was in front of him, but I do know, as I said before, the significance of it is the Holy Spirit goes before you not behind you. So I just want to just reiterate again regarding Elijah and Ahab and all that stuff. And I've said this before and I just and I feel to continue on it because when the Holy Spirit hasn't told me that it's over yet and and to move on, but it's very significant that we must understand that a showdown on Mark, on Mount Carmel isn't about just two parties um dueling against each other. It's about the, the very thing that's about to take place, the victory that takes place, and who gets the victory. And I know, and I've spoken about Elijah gets the victory. Of course he gets the victory. He's relying on God. But at the end of the day, it wasn't Elijah. It was God. It was Holy Spirit. Because the 450 prophets are calling on their God and nothing's happening. And that was also something I spoke about over the last several weeks is where the enemy is being allowed in the month of September, the month of October, to, to exhaust all of its resources. That is super critical for you to understand. The 450 prophets that were connected to, to Ahab, you need to understand that. They weren't just 450 um, self-employed you know, employed, you know, individuals, okay? They were, they were 450 prophets that were working for Ahab. They were individuals that were that were sought after for understanding, for for information. But at the end of the day, they couldn't provide what was needed when the power of God, when when their God was truly tested. And then all of a sudden, Elijah is calling on his God. So we see that the glory of God manifests the 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 um, the platform, the altar, the trench. Everything is consumed. Everything is consumed by the glory of God, by the fire of God. And then what takes place? Then the justice, the justice takes place after the glory. You have to remember that. That's super important. Justice doesn't take place before the glory of God manifests. Many of us over the course of the last several years have been asking for justice and natural realms and not desiring the glory, the manifest presence of God. And that's what's so important here. That's what took place on Mount Carmel when the glory manifested. And then after it manifested, everyone was given the ability to see and understand that God's in control and he gets all the glory and that he has a plan. And that plan came to pass. And then after it was all over, Elijah said to the people, seize the prophets and they seized the prophets and they walked them down, down the hill as they were all seized. But that's so important. So I want you to understand September and October, how significant it is during this season of the open door, 5784, the spiritual dream that the Lord gave me regarding the future. You can read about it, johnmetalli.wordpress.com. You can watch it on social media, on Facebook, and also um, on YouTube as well. But uh, I do believe we're in supernatural significant times. You're seeing things unravel. You're seeing things unfold. And you're seeing an implosion taking place where where wickedness right now is actually, come on, God, wickedness is actually uh, responding to righteousness. And wickedness is actually responding in a way where they're giving in and understanding that wickedness cannot overwhelm light. Okay, John 1.5 says, 
the light overwhelms the darkness and the darkness can't comprehend it because the enemy does not have authority over the light. Come on, God. So now we're in a season right now of the open door where the light is literally dominating the darkness. So that's where we are spiritually. And I hope that with the, the very things in the, that are being released in the nation through ver many various people, that you'll get a, an understanding. Ask Holy Spirit to give you understanding and revelation to what's taking place in the nation, what's being released, and also the various puzzle pieces that have been released throughout the years. I'm not talking about the last two, three years, four years. I'm talking about all the way out to 2007. I'm talking about 16 years ago, how the, the Lord has been speaking through various prophetic voices about what's taking place today. Thank you for your support. Thank you for all your prayers. We need it. God is good. Continue to pray for the ministry. Continue to pray for Jared Lasky and the Ventures in the Spirit. And uh, as we continue to, to bring perspective on a national level regarding what's taking place in the nation, but continue to pray, continue to believe. And for those that, that don't know God that are watching this, um, there's an opportunity to come to know him. All you got to do is just ask him, just call out his name. The word of God says, those that call on my name shall be saved and believe. Confess it with their mouth, um, you know, confess their sins, believe in their heart, they shall know God. But pray for those, even in government today, that don't know God. It's super important. God wants everybody saved. And everyone that's even in this present administration, God wants their hearts as well. So we don't curse them, we bless them. We speak life and we ask that the Holy Spirit would give them eyes to see and ears to hear and that they would turn their heart towards God. That's the ultimate plan. That's the ultimate desire. And that's what we truly, everybody wants as a believer, that not one would be lost. So anyway, johnnatelli.wordpress.com. Be blessed. Have a supernatural night. God is good. And we'll talk to you soon.